in a minute we're going to meet two of the people that really do make a huge difference. They're not the only two because there is a team of people. I've come up the road to a building which so many people will recognise and that is New Life Church. And we're going to look at the year so far. Uh, that's been a year which has had many exciting things in it and has, I'm sure, been a year in which the church has made a difference to a large number of people in Congleton because actually that's what it's there for. And, and then we'll go on and we'll explore some hopes and uh, ambitions they have to make even more of a difference in 2024. Right, and here comes Steve now to speak along with Jeff. So really it's lovely to see both you gentlemen today and uh, I'm sure you've got a lot which you can tell the listeners about the difference which New Life Church has made in 2023 and of course the hopes and prayers you have for the future in 2024. So really it's over to you two. Okay well good afternoon Vic. Uh, thank you for seeing us. Yes, thank you. Good to see you, Vic, and uh, all the listeners. Um, hope that you're enjoying the show and uh, hearing about all the great works that go on in our wonderful community. OK, uh, my name's Steve, Steve Hodgkinson. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, really celebrated this year was 40 years, our 40th anniversary of uh, New Life Church um, beginning. It began as a very small home fellowship in my front room, my, my late wife, and uh, we, uh, we began just as a little group of people worshipping God with a really, it became a heart to reach the, the people with the good news of Jesus mm -hmm. when the churches in Congleton 40 years or so ago were a bit dusty and starchy and uh, not very lively to say so, the so least. So was this when you were a young boy was it still? I, was 40 it? years ago I'd be... Uh, 38. Still young. Still, still young. young. As and, you still are. And uh, it, it's been a wonderful journey. It's been an exciting journey. And uh, the church uh, quickly outgrew our house. Um, and uh, then we moved to a, a room above a big workshop. Uh, who owned, who The owner of that workshop, a gentleman by the name of Peter Martin, is also one of the leaders of New Life Church now. And uh, we're, we're now in the old school called Dainsford, which was the Naughty Boys School. Uh, we hope we've changed it into a good boys school. <laughs> well, good boys and girls. And um, it's a wonderful place to be. And over the years, we've developed all sorts of resources, reaching out to our uh, people in the community from all walks of life and all yes. backgrounds. And uh, it's been an enriching experience for all of us. Um, when, when I woke up this morning, I must admit, um, this idea of a church without walls came into my head that conventionally people will think of as a church as that building that people go into on a Sunday. The reality is you have a whole host of people within this church who come together for fellowship and refreshment on a Sunday but actually work almost seven days a week, 24 hours a day, out there in the community, and that's what your heart is about. That was our ambition, to be a 24-7 church. And perhaps one of the key aspects of New Life Church in 2023, going back uh, decades, has been the introduction of the Alpha course. Mm -hmm. And that's really been a, a wonderful opportunity. Alpha is a great tool, it's used worldwide, of introducing people to the Christian faith. And uh, I would say two thirds of the church is made up of people who've come through an Alpha course. So, so why, for the benefit of people listening out there, is it called Alpha? Alpha is the beginning. Alpha, in, Alpha and Omega. And that's in one of the books of the Bible, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, and then 20, roughly 20 years ago, we've always had a vision to reach out to young children and young people and uh, particularly to reach out to young people through the schools and we needed to uh, we needed to engage the services of a, a full-time youth person uh, a youth minister youth pastor youth whatever you want to call him and my colleague Jeff who's sitting with me now uh, was uh, 
responded to a, an advert that we placed in the national magazine and uh, we're so grateful. Jeff's come on board and uh, developed the ministry out into the schools within the lo local community, both in primary schools and high schools. And, and I'll, can I hand you over to Jeff then now? Is that all right? Of course you can. I'm just, just thinking there because actually this contact with schools is one of the big differences you've made in 2023, isn't it? Yes, it is. You're getting out there. I was up at Congleton High the other day and... Uh, had a very good discussion there with the RE teacher and uh, so you're able to go there and help their scripture union so again you're going outside your walls Christian to make contact. Union. Christian, yeah, Christian Union, union. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is very much what you're all about isn't it? Very much so. Jeff you're Absolutely. going to be able to tell us about the various community roles that you play. Certainly, yeah, yeah no, that's right. So I was, uh, I can't believe that it's 22 years ago that I responded to that advert and came along with my wife, Suzanne, and our two young daughters, but uh, uh, 20 years seems to have flown by. And I must say that if, uh, if there wasn't much going on apart from a dusty church, then I would have found it difficult <laughs> to stay here. But actually, I'm always running to keep up with uh, all the things that are. Um, and, you know, if you, if you have someone who comes as a youth worker then it's not that one person that actually just has all the contact with the young people, but it, it helps other people to volunteer their time and to get involved and things like that. And, and I think that young people, teenagers especially, just really do need a listening ear and a non-judgmental space and a caring place where they can explore themselves and things. And of course, we uh, facilitate that, but we also do it with... Um, uh, a real strong desire and opportunity for them to experience or to explore their faith as well. Um, we've just had a, a Youth Alpha course that's been running and there were 24 young people on wow. that we saw through from that, the beginning that, to the end. That goes rather against the trend, doesn't well, it? Yes, young so. people actually coming along and getting engaged in the church. You sometimes don't hear about the good news no. like that. You know, you hear a lot of good, uh, of <laughs> bad news on the radio oftentimes and things. But yeah, that is good news. Um, and of course they have uh, fun and games and they eat pizza and things, but they also have the opportunity, just as in the adult Alpha course, to ask questions and to give their uh, opinion and to explore different themes mm -hmm. about Christian faith mm -hmm. and who mm -hmm. Jesus is. So that's really, so, really So one of the differences that you were definitely making is with young people in the community. You're giving them skills, you're giving them a sense of purpose, and you're giving them a foundation within which they will be able to make choices as they develop absolutely right you're, yes, you're, yes. you're, you're planting seeds yeah it's uh, now i'm longer in the tooth and have been here those two decades and a bit more some of the young people who used to come along to the youth group when i'd started here they have children who come along to the youth group now which is uh, really exciting to see and so it, it isn't just for the young people of course and it's not just for uh, the for alpha courses but Quite often I, sh I should think that, you know, if someone was hungry, uh, if they're cold, if they uh, are homeless, then there's no point in me saying, God bless you, and, you know, <laughs> here's a Bible or something like that, because what they really need is a sandwich or a blanket or a, a help to make a phone call to get involved with um, the housing system and things. And so actually that's, again, what we do for, for all that. ages, um, for families, for single people, um, and to really get uh, get in to help people when when they need the right contact. I think that takes us on to the food bank, really, doesn't it, and work? Uh, just before we come to the food bank, Vic, uh, a word that occurs to me is we offer an holistic uh, service as a mm. church. Uh, yes. Churches, 40 years ago, were just open the door on a Sunday for an hour mm. and people then went home. Whereas we're offering a holistic service, 24-7, seven, seven days a week. And uh, we, as well as employing full-time youth workers, we employ full-time uh, family support workers, food bank workers. And we use a lot of volunteers, as Jeff mentioned, that the, the people who are engaged and are employed by the church are usually heading up a team of volunteers who are helping to make it all happen. Yes. And uh, one of the things that we, we aim to be is uh, an all-embracing church for all sorts of people from all backgrounds. Um, this morning, I've just been into the Forget-Me-Not group, and um, they're, they're people suffering from dementia with their, with their helpers, their carers, yeah. and 
but it's full of a team of volunteers as well, all in their Christmas outfits, all having a good time and a bit of fun. And then, of course, you've also reached out to support the Ukrainians and other people from other countries Very who much have so. been brought here yes. in the last three years due to wars and yeah. conflict. We have a refugee champion. Uh, she's a retired uh, school high school teacher, but she's, uh, she's very much uh, got a heart for the refugees. We work with a lot of local authority agencies, and uh, we're very much a family hub here, mm -hmm. which reaches out to all, all ages and generations and so on. So it's not only a church without walls, but it's... Uh... A church of all ages. Yes, as well. that's rock, right. Rock of ages. That's, well, rock that's of ages. Thank you. Oh, no, mate. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so, Jeff, you were going to say about the food bank and how that's developed in the last year, the difference that that has made. It's uh, very interesting because there's been such a, uh, a cost of living crisis that we've heard about, and I think lots of people have uh, felt a pinch. And um, it's interesting because at the beginning of the year, even I think people were expecting this almost tsunami of need and we've not quite seen um, such a, a big increase but uh, we have noticed that physically physical items of food tins and packets and things like that that people used to bring in um, quite prolifically though those sorts of things have reduced um, mm -hmm. we still do have donations and actually at this time of year which you're recording just before Christmas and uh, high schools and churches and individuals are very keen to uh, be a part of uh, serving in that. So we've had a, a bit of an uptake in those donations in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. which is uh, very much appreciated, you know. Um, but we had noticed a drop in those items that were being given, and yet the uh, the number of people that we're serving, which is about 200 referrals each month, that, that continued about mm -hmm. the same, you see. So... Uh, we've been um, it's amazing. The volunteers again—they're the—they're the people who day by day come in. Some just have a morning; they might come for, or, or some come for a whole day, one day a week, and uh, they work so hard to order things, uh, put put them in um, to packets to be given to people, to check dates and make sure everything's safe, and uh, to keep records and things like that. And they do it with a cheerful heart amongst themselves and really welcoming to anybody because. You can imagine that coming along at a point of need, you'd feel maybe a sense of embarrassment or shame, but we want to dispel any of that for anybody, and I do mean anybody who would come in a point of need. I think we're beginning to see, actually, that there are many people who would have never imagined that they had got that need, who are now finding that they are being squeezed, and that it is sometimes difficult for them to put food on the table, even though they might have a low pay but secure job. That's right, yes, and we are seeing that and people who maybe are entitled to benefits, when you start off your benefit claim, you have to wait for several weeks mm. and there's a, a gap, almost two months sometimes, right. where uh, people are in need. But dis despite the need, I've got to say that the community of Congleton, whether it's in individuals or whether it's different community groups or businesses, um, they are so generous, really so generous. and. Um, We've had a, a few uh, new organisations. I think the tennis club this year started to have a collection, and uh, so one of our volunteers goes along and uh, receives from them. And uh, supermarkets continue to receive things for us or to give things in the morning that would otherwise go to waste, which is really good. And that's really important as we move into 2024. Sadly, this problem isn't, you'd like it to go away in a way, but the reality is that probably it's not going to go away. So you'll have hopes for 2024. The other amazing thing you did this year were the shoeboxes. How did you get on? We got over a thousand shoe boxes brought into the centre here um, this year, um, which was amazing. And a small team of people uh, uh, encouraged others to get involved in things. The shoe boxes have been going for well, probably thirty years now, I should think. Don't you think, Steve? And we we uh, have been involved from some of the early days, and certainly over the last twenty twenty five years, we've we've been involved. So. To see that many come together again, and again individuals and uh, groups here have put those together, and there will be 
uh, well, they will have been checked now and they'll be on their way out to various places. I think some going to Ukraine again and others into Africa or into Asia to, mm. to find children who would otherwise maybe would have nothing. Would not have anything. And yeah, we should explain. The food boxes them. come in empty, um, but they go out full. They do. Um, yeah. Through the kindness of people that uh, fill them enthusiastically to Absolutely. different age groups. And then you facilitate that through a different organisation to get them out there. It's a, it's a wonderful a meaningful thing to do at Christmas. Let, let's look at 2024. I have heard it rumoured that you've got some ambitious plans. Would you like to give us a sort of trailer to what you're hoping to do in 2024 that will make a difference? It, each year we look to see what God is uh, giving us to do. Yeah. And uh, so we're at the point of hearing... Uh, if you like a, a word from God, a message, a, a sense of God speaking to the church about uh, a new landscape. That was the, the message. Now we're in a position, uh, a situation where we're looking, where we're looking now to explore what that might involve. And uh, hopefully uh, in some way or other, it will involve reaching more people in more ways uh, providing more services to the community, especially as uh, statutory services are being cut back, then we rely more and more on volunteers. We are in it. We have sort of waved the flag and said, right. The first thing is to begin with prayer. Obviously, we're a church, and we are seeking God in prayer for the next stages and the next steps. So there's a verse in the Bible and Psalm. Uh, 119 verse 105 where it says your word that's God's word the Bible is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path so we're looking at the for a pathway and the step by step as we go and we, our experience is that God doesn't show us the whole picture on day one we'd be overwhelmed I think <laughs> but uh, he takes us a step at a time the expression is and the journey of a thousand miles it starts with the first step, step. Correct. So we're in that place where we're looking to see what God is saying to us, but where we're planning some special prayer times and prayer walks in our through our town and, and so on. Um, if I could just jump back quickly uh, to say, uh, we talked about the shoeboxes. One of the things we also do is not just, we're not just focused on Congleton, and surrounding area, we focused on a worldwide mission. We uh, two young men went out from this church over th just over thirty years ago, first to Hong Kong, then into China. We have a whole mission work in China, looking after abandoned children. Uh, thousands of children have been rescued because of this this work. Um, we we the shoe boxes started with our, our connection with it, started with a visit to Romania, taking a whole load of shoeboxes with presents in for the children, from which stemmed a new, a new opportunity to uh, support an orphanage called the Amic Family Home in a place called Cluj in Romania. Uh, we worked with a, a project in Mali, which is West Africa, uh, where we're reaching young people Often they're, they're Muslim children, young people, but we reach them through sport. Uh, we're not, we don't sort of try and convert them. It's not that sort of thing, but it, it's teaching them the principles of life through the Bible. I heard a lovely story some years ago, probably about 20 years ago, about a group of missionaries going into China, where, of course, you can't openly go into the street and say, I've got a Bible here in Chinese, in Mandarin, whatever. No. Would you care to read it? Uh, what they were doing was going around in the buses and with verses out of the Bible, which they would screw up into a little ball and then throw out the window. <laughs> and, of course, you never knew quite what had happened to that, except somebody would pick it up and read it. Well, they then went back 15 years later to one of these churches which had sprung up and they took... Bibles with them. Do you know what they said in the church? No. Did you write a whole book? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That just shows you that things can start with very small things and then reach out from there. 
Steve, there is another opportunity you've had to be involved with um, the town council. Oh, yes. Well, that's interesting because a very live situation. I've just come back. Our wonderful mayor, Councillor Rob Morton, a very good-hearted man, community-minded person, used to be a postman, so he knows the town well. Uh, he rang me. Uh, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd been helping a, a homeless person who turned up at the town hall. He came here. We, we've managed to be engaged with him. We've helped him with food. He's been sleeping rough in the park. This is not Rob. This is the homeless No, person. no, not right. the mayor's okay. not sleeping rough in the yeah, park. That's okay. um, <laughs> we, and uh, he's, he's now got some accommodation, but no electric in it. So we've been and put some electric on his card and I've dropped him off near his house or his flat uh, he, on sort of sheltered accommodation and uh, he's really ready to get going. Now we'll follow that up and uh, we'll hopefully we'll welcome him, him here into the church. His uh, ex uh, Sandbach school where I went to, we had a good conversation in the car. He's ex military, uh, he was in the cadet force at school, he was in the uh, he spent three years uh, in military, and now uh, he's, one of the things, relationships have broken down, he's found himself in a difficult situation. But it's thanks to the mayor and our relationship with the mayor yes. that we've been introduced to him and we're able, able to help him as well. And that is so, the way in which it works, isn't it? That's, it? Very, it it's very, it's very all much so. interconnected. If you've yes. got to be wired into the situation, yeah. and you've got to have the links out there, the listening ears, yeah. but what you're able to do then, through the people that are helping here, is to handle that situation and handle it professionally. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you're firstly coming from a humanitarian response. Mm -hmm. If that then leads on to something else, that's fine. Mm. If it doesn't, you've still done some goodness in the world. I believe that we're made up of three parts, uh, a bit like God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We're body, soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. And if one bit isn't working right, it affects the other bits. Mm -hmm. If we can meet the whole person body soul and spirit with the christian message but the christian message is about good practical help and uh, uh friendships mm. um i think uh, on the alpha course there are three key things that we talk about that's in every human being is a, a need for love and to be loved mm. a need for significance and a need for security yes and if we can provide that within a holistic atmosphere of the church family, then uh, we're helping people to be, be restored into normal living, if that's the right so, word. So there you have it. Anybody who didn't quite understand what was meant by the word holistic now has had the perfect explanation of what it's all about. It's a whole approach yeah. to the issues that we face. Can I say just a few things then to our listeners, um, because uh, we've mentioned lots of things there, uh, but if anyone is listening and if, if you're as an individual or a family uh, are in need of, of support um, or food or anything like that, then please do uh, get in touch. Um, you can ring the church if you want. Um, that's uh, 01260 297961. Or you can email mail at nlchurch.org.uk. Uh, so if, if anyone finds themselves in difficulty, in need, and thinks that uh, what you've been hearing is uh, something that would support you and help you, then please don't be shy. Do get in touch. If there's anyone who feels, you know, I've, I've got too much money to spend and you want to support the food bank or the work of uh, these things that help people in our community or any of the other things that uh, we've mentioned, then again, please do get in touch. Perhaps you might like to volunteer or you may be interested in getting in touch uh, with the Forget Me Not group because you may have an, an elderly relative or someone who's suffering from dementia and may need some support. Please get in touch. If, you've, if you have a desire to know about the Christian faith and uh, you've got questions, then we have a new Alpha course beginning in the middle of January and uh, you'd be very welcome to come along to that. That's on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday morning, starting in our coffee shop uh, or on a Wednesday evening at 7pm, uh, starting with a two-course meal. But always a warm welcome and an opportunity to explore faith in a non-judgmental, in an open, uh, communicating way, really. And every Sunday, of course, we worship together here as well. And you'd be very welcome to join us at 
in the morning on a uh, Sunday. Not at 2.30, which is Chinese dentist time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And everyone's welcome, really. And thank you, Jeff, because what he forgot to say was the Alpha course is free. It is. You yes. can make a donation if you wish to, but it's free. And I'm going to say to everybody that's listening out there that everything that you've just heard is completely genuine, that somebody coming into a church new for the first time can often feel somewhat terrified. Intimidated, yes. Uh, they may feel that they're not good enough no. to come in. They may feel that they don't know anybody. Mm. And in every instance, when those doors open, you are able to welcome those people to come and join with you, to have a cup of tea at the end of the service, just to listen. They will always find somebody who says, welcome, mm. yes. pleased to see you. Where have you come from? It's then up to you when you feel that it's right to share why you're there. Nobody's going to hit you over the head with the Bible <laughs> or uh, to say you're not worthy no. to be in that place. You welcome all comers, more or less at all times. You do like to get to bed at night and have a good night's <laughs> okay, sleep. Really. But, um, so it's not quite 24-7, but it's as good as, and the welcome is always there. So... I mean, it's not just about new life. Of course, you might choose to go elsewhere, but uh, I think there is something about this, as I call it, Church Without Walls, that is rather mm. special and is all about yes. the community and the difference yeah. that you make. We are part of uh, Churches Together in Congleton, uh, and we work with the, uh, several of the churches on Congleton Bible Week, uh, where we have a special uh, week and a special speaker coming and so on. Mm. Um, in fact, uh, Jeff and myself... We all were out for lunch with the rest of the uh, leaders of the Congleton Bible Week only on Tuesday mm -hmm. for Christmas lunch and we have a very good friendship developing. Uh, we've got a new uh, priest in the St Mary's Roman Catholic Church in Congleton. He's Nigerian mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking forward to getting to know him mm -hmm. and developing our friendship and relationship with them. Uh, what we, I believe that we, we're all united round. Uh, the fact that uh, the cross and Jesus is our saviour. Yes. Um, we have different traditions and styles of worship, etc. But in the end, we are one universal church. There you are. You've heard what's been said. That is the vision of two of the people here for 2024. That's the welcome which is on offer. That is the support which is on offer. It's open to all. There's no charge the choice is very largely yours. Now we're going to go on now and we're going to actually hopefully meet up with some of the other people that are actively involved in the work of uh, New Life Church and hear a little bit about of what they do and indeed why they do it. So uh, I've had the seats replaced uh, by two young ladies and these two young ladies work very, very hard in making the food bank that they offer here, which you've heard little about, work. So really, I'm interested to hear from both of you. Introduce yourselves and tell us about your experiences in 2023, the differences that you've made, and of course, uh, what you think you'll be up to in 2024, whether you actually think you'll be able to have a rest on a <laughs> Monday morning when you would otherwise be turning up to restock, mm. or whether in fact life is going to continue very much through 2024 because it, the issue isn't going to go away. The floor is yours, ladies. I'm Jo Crichton. I've worked here at New Life Church for about 12 years now, maybe a little bit longer. And myself and Lindsay became responsible for the food bank when we first went into lockdown. Uh, the very first lockdown, everybody else got sent home, all the volunteers got sent home. So that's 2020, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. it will have been February, March 2020. It was Boris that reminded yeah, it, me of that yes, there uh, you go. on television earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, and since everything sort of started getting back to normal, we've remained responsible for it between us. We have lots of volunteers in there that help us. And the need hasn't dropped. If anything, it's grown. So the peak that we saw during COVID times of people desperately needing food who were isolating or shielding has just been replaced with the cost of living crisis. So 
some of the recipients may have changed or the reasons for needing it may have changed but the actual level of number that we're doing doubled overnight in 2020 and it's remained at a steady sort of 200 parcels a month it was 200 individuals a month when you broke them down now that you know it's probably more than that with the families. So when you say a parcel, that's in effect it could be a 200 family. families yeah. which very often you're supporting. Yeah, we... We're not just talking about people who might be on the street. We're actually no. talking about ordinary families, yeah. very often on yeah. a low-income wage, One of who our... are struggling. Yes, that's correct. One of our biggest um, referrers, so we work with multiple agencies um, from all different areas of society and the community who uh, refer their clients into us and one of our biggest referrers collectively is the head teachers of the primary schools in the area we've got 10 local primary schools and we've got a good relationship with all the heads haven't we pretty much and yeah we all of them use us frequently i've been referring to new life church as the church without walls right that uh, so many people think of as the church as being the building and it meets on the sunday yeah in the case of this your working seven days a week Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day almost Mm -hmm. and you're in touch with community you're in touch with the people that are the ears of the community and they're passing that through to you you then are the if you like the oil in the machinery yeah to do something about it because so often we can talk about the problems Mm. but finding the solutions is an awful lot harder Absolutely. But you do. Yeah, and there's plenty of people that receive a food parcel. Some need them regularly um, or have them for a short period of time. You don't hear from them again and then maybe later in the year they come back. Some, it's a one-off because they (laughs) maybe change from a weekly pay to a monthly pay in that first month um, need it and stuff. But then um, a lot of the people that do receive food parcels engage with us on a different level. They either access our family support or come to um, the nursery. They, you know, they may have children in the nursery. Mm-hmm. Come to the Jubilee Club. All those other different things that we have. They, some of them do interact. And I think the other thing that's important to say is, as, as well as over the years. We've developed really good relationships with the agencies, haven't we? Yeah. We we personally know um, some of the team with the mental health reenablement mm. team, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and we we work closely with them. Housing plus, associations, yeah, plus staying housing associations, social workers, yeah, health visitors. health visitors. The list is endless, really, mm. and a lot of those faces are the same face. So you get to know them, and then you can better support the the people receiving the food because you get to know a bit more about their situation. So do you ever feel that actually you're having to take on the job which hitherto would have been provided by, say, social services or Meals on Wheels or organisations yeah, like think, that? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. we've filled the gap. We, you you've know, filled we're, the gap? We're yeah. the crack. We, we're, the, yeah. we're the filler of the between the different You're tiles. Stop, stop You're that stopping the people falling yeah. through yeah. the cracks, basically, and aren't you? It is interesting, though, because the people that went before us, the people that established this food bank um, and the volunteers that ran it before we came in, because of how we did have to rejig and rearrange a little bit and we put our own um, style on it, but if it hadn't have been so well established, when we did go into that lockdown where everybody else was flapping around not knowing what to do, whether that was the government, the NHS, it took them weeks to get boxes out. The we gov- just kicked in, the, didn't gov- we? the government flapping around. Well, we had, and, and of course, on. we had this building with no <laughs> one else in it. It was the craziest time because there was four of us in here. We took over the hall, the corridors. Whole we just put tables yeah. up everywhere. And there was just us two, wasn't it? And it was incredible. It, yeah. it happened in yeah. a minute. Yeah. Whereas everybody else took weeks to get going. It's like I had a similar incident about 15 years ago, mm. which first got me involved in, uh, in in Romania. Right. No, sorry, it didn't first get me involved. It's after I've been involved for a while, and uh, I heard about some colossal floods which had occurred in one part of the country, and uh, I thought I knew somebody very well that could help me out. Mm. Uh, somebody called International Aid Trust, based up at Chorley. So I just sent them an email. Mm. And in that instance, I got a reply back within 24 hours, which didn't say, who the heck are you? Mm. What organisation you are? Can I see your constitution? Mm. Uh, It simply said, what do you want? (laughs) And as a result of that, I was able to get 40 tonnes of aid into that area in Romania. And, And we need people like you, don't we, that don't get 
too tied up with all of the machinery of bureaucracy yeah, who yes, simply yeah. say I've got a heart to do this mm. and what's more I've got the skill to do it now Lynn's you've got an extra skill because you've got a little van that goes around oh, the van, yeah. The, tell, um, us, tell us about the, um, it's the not, love thy neighbour van it, it's not the trotter van is it it's no. not a three-wheeler oh that van's used for all sorts of things yeah tell um, us a bit about it yeah so the van also sort of came out of lockdown I think didn't it it happened around that so- just before yeah. like yeah a god thing I would say because literally just as we were locking down uh, we had a van with sign writing on the side um, and that van delivered food, collected food. Uh, I mean, it does all sorts now. It takes us on painting jobs and gardening jobs and, um, yeah, everything. that Wait, we, we need that van. I mean, it's only a small one, but presumably yeah. it does some sort of light removals as well. It because does, you have yeah. got mm-hmm. another arm in furniture, haven't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. We'll We've go on to that in a minute. Furniture we'll recycling and the, the family support, but with the food as well, I'll tell you what that van's very good at. Going to the tip, in it. Yeah. They spend a lot of time going to the tip. <laughs> or I, hope, I hope we get a rebate for the extra costs which have been imposed in having to take it all out there all the when we back. had a perfectly good, usable recycling. <laughs> we like to it's sp- not a tip, it's a recycling depot. Recycling remember, depot. We uh, like to split it between our fish and Mac. <laughs> and as we're talking about hopes for 2024, and as certain people from Cheshire East are listening, how important... <laughs> Is that recycling site in Congerton to do you ladies to do your job easier? Well, it saves a couple of hours a week. Yeah. Not a couple of hours to go and a few there, bob. Yeah. And a few yeah. bob yeah. in, in pe- terms of fuel. The petrol money as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so we are fortunate enough to have a it, tip pass, a recycling pass, so the van <laughs> can go in and out as many times as it likes, which is very good, otherwise it would be a problem. But yes. But so yeah, a recycling depot in Congress in 2024, I think we'll all say... I think everyone yes, wants please. one, don't they? Yeah. It's needed, <laughs> and Congerton is growing, so the need is going to be there even more in 24 and 25 than it is today. Mm. And we're all very responsible people. Mm. We like recycling. Mm, yeah. So, on the subject of recycling, furniture, what do you get up to there as well? Second-hand furniture? That's a link-up, isn't it, with yeah, it somebody is. else? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's not the big mainstream part of what No, but it's amazing that we must get 10 phone calls a day busy, from that, it, yeah. you know, and it's kind of run off the edge of a desk rather than somebody's responsibility. <laughs> a few of us have got a bit of a finger in it to yeah. keep it going. Yeah. But basically, uh, um, an old customer of... Um, Steve, who runs his own business, he's got a warehouse for his own business and he has a sort of charity sector of that. Arm to it, yeah. Uh, an arm and it means that we can store furniture that we collect there and uh, one of his members of staff, Andy, and his um, a bigger van. A colleague, he's got a much bigger van, so we can work with them. We used to get a chunk of the emergency assist money from Cheshire East, we used to have a third of it. Um, for this area but then like a lot of things through local authority it goes up for tender every three years and they decided to give it all to one place mm-hmm. in Winsford rather than split it across the county the knock-on effect of that was people just rang us anyway so mm. we're sort of unofficially mm. doing a similar project but it's phenomenal out there because fundings have um, been reduced and people who are don't have a disposable income they need things like fridges washing machines they're essential items but through emergency assist they can only get one um quite often it's a reconditioned one with no warranty so if that breaks within six months they can't then have another one so they're back in the same boat so we try and when we do them, we try and install them, and if anything does go wrong, we, we then do Then you can do way. something but, about it. Yeah, but yes. we, we are reliant upon donations. We keep an eye out on ones going cheap on Facebook. Um, in the past, we've had small grants to be able to buy maybe like six reconditioned washing machines or cookers. They seem to be the big ones when it comes to white goods. Yes. We get an abundance of things like sofas and things, and sometimes we actually have to say, oh, no, we, we can't store anymore. Um, but fridges, freezers, washing machines, cookers... There's always a demand, and, always and they're demand. always really hard to get hard of, and not a lot of funding out there for them either. So and, it's and not it's, like we can apply for grants. Just the people that we've got in this country, is it? I mean, you've been immensely helpful yeah, for Syrians, help. Ukrainians, yeah. Ukrainians, Ukrainians, as well. Um, yeah, we, and, the, and the Afghans as well. Yeah. Over at the Chimney House, we've yeah. done a lot of support with them. Yeah. Um, and another big one, often the situation of people needing furniture is 
often it's uh, fleeing domestic violence and they've been, they're being put from a different part of the country into here. Yes. But they're given a property, which is fantastic, but nothing in it and no financial package to support mm. that. So you may get a, a, a mum with one, two, six children on the normal benefits and she's very grateful to be in a safe environment but there's no carpets there's no furniture there's no white goods there's no nothing and, there's and you no can't imagine how that really makes a bad situation 10 times yeah. worse you suddenly think oh i'll make the kids a sandwich i'm safe but, but i haven't nothing. got a bread knife no i haven't got a breadboard. yeah i haven't got the plates to put it out no. on yeah so you can't even be the mum yeah or the parent that you want to be mm. So Without, we do try and help with all those needs. kind of basic yeah. things. Yeah. We have a really good stash, stash of bedding, curtains, crockery, pans. We even get microwaves. To, we've even bought, actually, you gave out like George Foreman the other day. George Foreman grill, yeah, to a man that had got nothing. Um, we get a lot of people that say they've only got a microwave. So that's the cooking everything out of yeah. our microwave. And they're having to buy instant meals, which of course yeah. adds to the cost. To them. Or if they don't have transport as well, yeah. they find themselves shopping in the more expensive shops. So whether yeah. that be the um, the local convenience store, uh, that's another problem with not having a freezer. And a freezer, in accordance to Cheshire East, isn't an essential not item. Sure. Really? Fridges, a freezer isn't. Oh. If you can't buy a big bag of chicken nuggets from Tesco's that lasts to feed all your kids, you, you're stuck with your fridge space. Yeah. Um, which makes it more, again, more if expensive. If you've got the freezer, you can split that purchase down yeah. into 10 yeah. meals if you're smart. Yeah, and, you uh, can make a massive do that. bolognese, bulk it up you're and doing freeze Doing any cooking portions. lessons for people? Or you we have. You do yeah. that. We it's have. Hard. Again, nothing formal. I've done them before in um, Mum's Space, a group we run on a um, Thursday morning where we've, we've learnt to cook some certain things. And then Lindsay has um, a number of, volunteers quite a large proportion of them, of them are single men that live in supported accommodation um, and for whatever reasons they can't work whether mm -hmm. it's because it's part of their contract of living in supported accommodation or because of health or whatever and they come out volunteering with Lindsay a lot and quite a few of them were keen to learn to cook they'd either never cooked or they've been in prison for a long time it's just not how they were raised or had the opportunity yeah, yeah so, and and until recently, I mean, it used to be a school subject, but yeah. it's one oh. of the subjects which is slipping out of the curriculum now, isn't it? In yeah. favour of the, yeah, the, the basic yeah. English and yeah. maths and sciences, yeah. which are seen to be important. Yeah. You might have, know the theory of how a cake rises, yeah, yeah. but the reality is you've got to be able to cook it. Yeah. I'm, I mean... This has dispelled a rumour because I, I thought Lynn's actually survived on cake. But, uh, <laughs> no. is, that, is that not true? Well, I, I live on the allotment with all the vegetables and oh, the fruits. Oh, so you're doing healthy growing? Yeah, like, we, yeah. Have, we promote healthy in here, yeah. So, so allotment. Neither is a big yeah. fan of cake, are we? No. no. Has this new life got an, an allotment? An allotment, well? a rather large yeah. allotment. Tell us about the allotment because I didn't yeah, know we, about we that. Yeah, we missed that bit, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so some of my male volunteers okay. and a couple of females as well, um, we go up to the allotment all summer and um, we, we grow it from seed. So we're planting seeds out in the little pots in the greenhouse. We've got a massive greenhouse polytunnel um, and then we're watching it grow. This year we had uh, abundance, didn't we? We, yeah. had too, we had too much yeah. veg growing. We were growing everything, cauliflower, broccoli, sprouts, corn raspberries, on corn on the cob, every herb herbs. going. It, it, and the lads got really, really... Um, overexcited about it all didn't they? they loved and that's probably where the cooking came from yeah because they grew it they wanted to know how to cook with it and yeah and as it, as it became ripe for picking we sort of came up with this idea that they they got first pick of the crop yeah because yeah. they, they got nurtured it, it. Yeah. yeah yeah and some of it goes in the food bank and on the free table yeah. but most of it we'd say Lindsay mm. would say to the lads at the end of the day take what you want mm. And then but they were growing at home themselves, yeah. and they were growing. With, some of them have recently got access back to the children. So these are men that have, you know, they've not been around the children the whole lives, but they've got access back, and they were growing with the children as well. Mm. Yes. So it, it was a really beautiful it's, it's thing a win, to see. It's a win-win. I mean, I mean, certainly I've seen this before that us men don't realise how important our partner is until our partner is not there, and then suddenly there is a whole skill set that we haven't got. And we've got to reacquire that. In reacquiring it, not only do we look after ourselves better, but we also establish uh, an improved self-esteem. We've yeah. got a new skill, yeah. 
and we can invite our friends around. Come and yeah. enjoy the meal. That so I good just for mental health. That, that could go so. both ways, and it is good for the mental health. But I think one of the things that blew our mind about some of um, the lads is like watching us chop an onion. They were like, "Whoa, never seen." <laughs> or when we made, what did we make with them? Courgettes. And they were like, "What is that?" They, they'd never tasted or seen or and then yeah and just, just seeing, opening the mind isn't it really yeah bit. some of them that have maybe been at a Maj- majesty's pleasure since they were sort of 16 and now in their early 30s things like that just yeah. mind bl- and that blew our minds but uh, one lad who we just loved to bits he's been volunteering for a few years he was desperate to learn how to make a beef curry wasn't he and we actually bought him a slow cooker right because they're not expensive yep. and he came down from volunteering he's like i'm ready i'm ready and we taught him, put it in, and then sent him home with his curry. curry. Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay gave him a lift home in slow the super van. On his knee. In the super van, slow <laughs> cooker. Actually, on his that particular day, he was also moving into a new accommodation, into a flat. He was. And so we took a load of curtains and bedding. So we had this van full of Went home goodies. Happy man, didn't yeah, he? and he was still very much in contact with him. He was here on Friday, um, having pie, pea, and gravy with us. So they're a nice bunch. They are. The, yeah. Which just shows you again how. A committed initiative by two people mm. in New Life Church mm. makes that huge, huge mm. difference to a group of people that we tend not to think about. The, the man yeah. that's lost their partner yeah. and suddenly find themselves yeah. going, help, what do I do now? Yeah. And you're coming in there, giving them skills back, yeah. giving them confidence, yeah. helping them re-establish mm. their new life. I mean, don't get me wrong... This place is one of the craziest places you could ever work, and not you could come to work, drive down, thinking, right, today I'm going to do this, 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 this and this. None of that happens because all these other weird and wonderful things walk through the door instead. Well, I'm just, you, I'm you, just taking you exactly. away. Exactly. <laughs> we were, work, yeah, we were yeah, unpacking, we're packing, big order. unpacking we shopping. We were getting yeah. ready for Christmas, and we got a quick go upstairs. Um, but I've got to say, we 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 have some huge challenges, some heartbreaking stories. But I don't think one day has gone past in the last four years where we haven't wet ourselves <laughs> laughing. <laughs> there isn't anyone I wouldn't rather be driving around in a van with. <laughs> But this point came up the other day. Volunteers, we think everybody's told is good to volunteer. Nobody's told about the personal reward that you get mm. from volunteering. Yeah, a lot you're of You're not them. doing it for any personal gain. No. But what you get back is most unexpected. Tell us that's about all, some of the really surprise things that happen. That's the food bank volunteers. I mean, oh, they, well, some of them love it, don't they? Yeah, like Lisa Farmer, Lisa. Yeah, she comes, she for, comes a break. for a break. She's a farmer. Uh-huh. A, a dairy farm, a huge dairy farm, one of the biggest ones in Cheshire. They sell the milk to Sainsbury's. But she comes She's every the Wednesday. Farm manager, yeah, huge job. Massive job. But she comes on a Wednesday. She didn't even want to leave this Wednesday, did she? Because <laughs> she actually, it's a break. And it isn't a break because she's all day doing and. She's busy. Yeah. yeah. But, but she if loves you want it. the job doing, yeah. you're giving yeah. to a busy person, yeah. don't you? But the, the, so the food, coming full circle back to the food bank, the volunteers we have in the food bank are on a fixed road they have fixed shifts we don't sort of have lots of different people coming in and out because that way you sort of get to know it it, yeah and and it's sensitive information and stuff but all of them get so much out of it most of them have been doing it for a long time now Mm. our three monday tuesday ladies have been a team since we very first were allowed volunteers back in post covid weren't they Uh, and they come every week in out bagging up sugar putting food away making food parcels and they form relationships with some of the clients that come in yeah. uh, recipients of the parcels and us and we can trust them yes they, they've been trained they know what they're doing yeah if there is the problem they'll give us a ring so we get it going we close it down we make sure all the cogs are in place but they then run it that's yeah. that's what they're doing and it, it's incredible to watch them be able to 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 do that for us and that, that just makes me think about something else which shows your professionalism, safeguarding. Because yes. these people are vulnerable in the truest sense of the yeah. word, whatever their situation is. But you've got a whole professional framework there to ensure that their vulnerability isn't exploited. Oh, absolutely. Which is so easy no, 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 to no. happen uh, in life. Yeah. Half Abs- of those volunteers in the food bank are ex-teachers, yeah. aren't they? Or- yeah. We have confidentiality. Every single volunteer that comes, Lindsay, has a volunteer pack that they have to read and sign. Part of that is a confidentiality agreement. You know, we're not 
was sort of walking around. Um, yeah, all blabbing the, about. Yeah, Ooh, do you know who came research, in the other day? Yeah. That's my, no. you, you, you're never going to do that. No. Everybody and, and, in that food bag has got a heart for it, haven't they? Mm. They've got a heart for, for, for working yeah, in that food bag. And we've got a certain amount of fully first aid trained, a certain amount that have done the safeguarding training. And then last year we had a, a guy... Uh, called Rob Cook, who works for Emerging Futures, who's also trained as a counsellor, and he mm-hmm. came and delivered two free sessions for us on um, working with working people with in people. chaotic it, situations. Yeah, isn't yeah it? with it made people of their wise. mental health. So, so that's both staff training, which you can do, and I know you also do like trauma counselling. As yeah, well, yeah, we're a professional. That's it, and we're not we're not involved in that part. We well, might no. refer to it, but it's certainly not a branch of what we do. But no. it was just good for Rob to come in because he was training our volunteers and us in how to manage somebody that maybe is having um it could be anything from a psychotic break to a bad day but it, it either way these people are walking in here you've got to control anger management because uh, yeah, it's so easy you could be the trigger without realizing you're yeah, the trigger but we're also very aware like you said it, everybody is welcome we do have situations that we have to do a risk assessment on because of safeguarding and I think some of the discernment needs to come. We have a nursery school on premises, we are a licensed education setting and we do have to be able to find that blend and balance so there has been occasions when we've got in situations that... Well I have noticed there that um, when you use the entrance that's used for that you almost have a, like a level crossing don't you so yes. where the young people are coming out of the hall and they're going back that's to right. wherever they're going to then they get priority as opposed to anybody else who waits until the level crossing gates are opened again and then normal circulation yeah, it, just, it, it just makes it a more controlled like environment it, level it, it, it reduces the nursery manager's anxiety <laughs> <laughs> Who would be a nursery manager? You know, <laughs> would, yeah. you know, yes. Which is worse, a fourteen-year-old boy or yeah. a six-year-old that's in a bad, uh, having a bad day? Yeah. yeah. So no. Just looking ahead, twenty twenty-four. On the face of it, it's not getting a lot better. The minimum wage, or whatever they call it now, has gone up. But you try living on a part-time job, job at. Twelve pounds an hour mm. after tax. Let's, let's call it ten pounds an hour, and you've got a part-time job that's bringing you in two hundred pounds a week, mm. uh, eight hundred pounds a month. Well, you if you're in rented accommodation, mm. that's half of it gone before you start. Yeah. Then you've got to heat it, yeah, and everything else. You and council it, tax. Be, it's so very easy for you to end up with about ten percent, five percent of that to feed a family of four. Mm. Yeah. So on the face of it. You're not going to be out of a uh, a life experience. No, no in, it's not all of a sudden going to get quiet 2024. again. 2024, it's going to carry on. What do you most need to be able to do what you're doing? Well, oh, consistent donations. flow of donations, whether they be physical or financial. Mm. Um, and I'd say we get a blend of the two. One of the biggest things we've noticed in the last nine months is the drop in, in physical donations. donations. Okay. It's picked up. The last week or so because we're coming up to Christmas but we used to have daily drop-offs from either individuals companies whoever now I think it's because food's so expensive yeah. I think people are just less people, people. Are actually struggling and in finding themselves that maybe the extra. people that were donating and our donation are actually... box at Tesco's right. so yeah. in our in our local Tesco's we've got a big donation box yeah. there's actually yeah. two there's one for the Trussell Trust which is for your local Trussell Trust. Now, there isn't one in Congleton, so actually all the food in that tub goes over to Middlewich. Okay. And they which then they it. sometimes ship back over here because they've got too much. Not for a long time. We haven't had no, that call no, for a long for a while. time. And then the other box is for us. That used to be, I won't say overflowing, but full to the brim every mm-hmm. week. Um, and now it's probably about half full, isn't it? So yeah. we've noticed a, a huge decline. But we still do have some very generous people um, and businesses and yeah. individuals. That, Although we have to shop it. Well, that, you shop a lot, don't yeah, you? Yeah, mm-hmm. diligently donate to us. If people are thinking of giving, and everybody, let's face it, can give a little yeah. of something, Yeah, yeah. then what is of most use to you it's not going to be the carrots that are slightly going off no no um, no anything meaty items yeah. probably it's, 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 anything meaty because you've got freezers so you can store it yeah we do and we do have some stuff in our freezers that we that we keep that we give out 
Yeah, absolutely. So any non-perishables, but the things that you think can go a long way and feed a family. So all those bit oh, and individuals. But so the rice, the, the, the pastas, rice, the cereals. The yeah, cereals. but funnily enough, because they are such staples, the things we get the most of are pasta, beans, and soup. Okay. So they are. They do tend to be the things we have plenty of. The things we're constantly running out of are things like jam, tinned, tinned corn, corn beef. beef. Um, cereal, curry. yeah, the curry, the chili, things that I'd call a main meal. Um, but even we've got fridges too. So if we could, we'd give out things like butter, mm-hmm. uh, mar- you know, margarine, spread. ham, cheese. We've given out historically, haven't we? We've shopped it so people can make sandwiches and. But yeah, yeah. So so obviously, as far as individual families are concerned, then those are the areas. You are getting support, I know, from the big supermarkets, and supermarkets now are on a real sort of drive not to put the out-of-date <laughs> product into landfill. landfill. Yeah. So a lot of that has come to you, but presumably more would be welcome. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, it's interesting because it, it's sort of marketed that they're doing us a favour, but actually they have to shift it because they get charged for their waste. Indeed. It's, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of it's, both. Yes. Uh, and often we'll get like 100 stale French sticks that aren't fit for going out, so they go in our compost, but 90% of the time... Just don't tell anybody that <laughs> sourdough doesn't go off. Yeah. I must admit that when I come through on a Sunday and, and there's, there's, there's just sourdough, sourdough there, yeah. we're going, nobody else is going to use that, yeah. sourdough doesn't go off. You no. just, just wet it and then enjoy it. Because <laughs> it doesn't... Really, it does go off, but... Yeah. You know, it can last a month. Yeah, we do. As, sell by day. We do as much as we can for nothing to go to waste. Don't we, we are zero, zero waste. Yeah. I think yeah. the best example today, we've had quite a large donation from the supermarkets. We knew it was too much for us to get through, so this morning Lindsay's divided a load of it up into three different crates, and we've driven to three different hostels slash supported living okay. and given them a crate yeah. each. Yeah. 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 Um, and we tend to have the free table in the corridor, so it sort of doesn't matter who you are, but if you're using this building, um, help yourself off that, and then we keep a certain amount to go out in the food parcels. But that needs to be got rid of daily yep. and we have actually got a nursery parent who's a pig farmer yeah. she rescues animals and she's got some pigs so anything that we really can't and before it goes in on a compost pile she's now taking and feeding it to the pigs so I everything thought there goes were all sorts of restrictions yeah. on what you can no, give pigs these days no. but pigs are still pigs are they? they can't have avocado onions onions and avocado, Onion avocado yeah. Oh, right. yeah but we do we um, marks and spencers big tesco's little tesco's Greg's and the Bromley Road Co-op all support us That's daily. Right. About business sponsors, do you get an awful lot of money coming in from business sponsors or is that something that local businesses might think of to help? I mean, that would be fantastic if they did. We do have um, some very generous people in our community, yeah. don't they? Yeah. That, um, In fact, what, what we were doing before is um, Levos, or Levos, I think you pronounce it, Last year they picked us as their charity because they were focusing on local charities. And although they're an international company, one of their members of staff Googled it and found we were the nearest food bank. So last year they were Mm. buying us food, but they didn't just want to give us money. They wanted to do the work as well and make the staff get involved. So they were ordering it from Aldi, loading the van from Aldi, bringing it here, unloading it here, putting it away and paying for it. So I I, I put my feet up, I had a margarita (laughs) now. (laughs) <laughs> Which makes a huge difference. So they and well, they've done it again. They've had such. They said they enjoyed yeah. the experience so much. They've decided to help us the out. The first again time this they've year. ever done that. The first time they've ever they've supported ever done the a same charity twice. two years in a row. So. They loved us that much. And right. we've got other ones that um, maybe give smaller donations, but regularly. Uh, it does seem to be the time of year coming up to Christmas where people do want to to donate and help. But then we also have. I think there's one couple that come once a month every single month for the last three years and give us an envelope with a hundred pounds in it come to the door and that's how they do it so so i think what we're establishing is for 2024 the issue sadly is not going to go away we hope that it doesn't get any larger but it could easily do so that you are not only doing this because it's new life church you're doing this because you're providing a service back to the whole community and in a way you're underpinning 
traditional services that used to be able to do this through local authorities who are unable to do it because the money just isn't there and they're having to look very, very hard at their own budgets yeah. as Cheshire East is at the moment. Mm -hmm. We might joke about it, but they have an unenviable task in mm -hmm. doing that. But you can make that difference. All you need are people with the will, whether they're individuals, whether they are supermarkets, whether they are businesses that say, I know about you mm. and I want to do my little bit, mm. which is going to enable you to do an even bigger bit yeah. for the people that are out there. And if that means you've got to find another 10 volunteers, mm. you'll, you'll happily accept the volunteers mm. because it sounds as if you're going to need it, doesn't it? <laughs> Listen, I think it's time for you to get back whatever you were planning to do before. <laughs> yes. It's been lovely to talk to you. Oh, it's you? lovely to share your enthusiasm <laughs> for uh, what some people could just view as a thankless task. It's not a thankless task. Oh, you no. are just out there doing what this church, what this organisation does mm. which is make a difference in your community and that's what you're going to continue to do in 2024 with the oh. help of you listeners out there get in touch with them you'll find some new friends <laughs> and you'll be really really impressed with what they are doing thanks Brilliant. to both of you you're welcome Thank you. see you again <laughs>